This type of photo is one of the most beautiful but really difficult to obtain and what is beautiful about it is see here in the air you can see the song basically these lovebirds are singing and um, the air is cold enough we have enough uh, blurred background to see the actual air particles that come out you know from their lungs so I'm really really happy that I managed to get such nice shots. The male is producing a one long sound and the female two shorter sounds. And um, see the red here, the red part, the crown, <laughs> the red crown, I, I was calling it hat. No, not a Donald Trump red hat. This is a crown, a Japanese crane crown. It's getting uh, bigger when they are excited. I guess the skin is stretching and makes for such really stunning, stunning photos. And see, you can even see the tongue. See, like here, if you photograph them against the trees, it's kind of hard to see the shape. So you actually have to, you know, keep following the cranes in the air and yes get them finally when they overlap with the sky and then try to get a sharp shot and uh, it's really not so easy especially when you have a strong zoom so basically you you catch them when they are on the ground and are getting ready to fly and then follow 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 and yeah, try to get them. I think this is a nice shot. And this is another thing that you are targeting when you photograph the cranes. Not when they just, you know, stand around here, but when they get excited and uh, jump and play around and um, to have you know to get them with the wings spread out and the legs in in the air something like this it looks really pretty and here you can observe the red hats that they have and when the birds are um, excited like during eating and um, uh, when they fight the red will become larger so i think this skin here stretches and the red is more visible and look at this, I managed to get some wing action here. However, really the zoom, the 600 zoom that my camera has is not enough. You would need way more to get any super cool artistic photos here. And these here are the younglings, the young birds. Uh, really gray, boring color, no red spot, but they are kind of cute and uh, they cry for the mummy and yeah and here are the adults you see the red hat very distinctive here again ugly babies <laughs> gray ugly babies staring at us and here it's hard to see because the it makes a strong contrast but this one is also an ugly baby see how beautiful the colors are here this black and white on an adult bird this would be a nice shot but it's overexposed and uh, so the birds are landing in and you are trying to keep the focus on the birds and it depends on your camera the focus could go all the way in these trees and then the birds will be not sharp so this is yeah one thing that you're aiming for to get the birds in the air with their wings spread nicely out and yeah on a contrasty background and with this uh ones down here actually it's a nice shot but the contrast on the real photo is not as pretty then something like this see the bird is quite close you even can see the beak open but the sharpness went all the way in the trees so it's a not good photo this one is better and uh, yes and this is a really really bad situation 
when it overlaps with everything but you need to follow the bird continuously and you know keep shooting until they are like on free sky like here and um, it depends on um, you know which direction they fly to because sometimes if like this year they fly somewhat towards you and then they catch the sunlight you know they are like like lit up by the sun it makes for really stunning photos um then yeah it, it you know if your camera doesn't keep the track of it it will be blurred so see this one also is catching the sunlight and it's really bright and uh, by difference to these they are kind of lateral to the sun and these appear dark against the sky but yeah with the clouds behind it's not bad however you know my zoom is just 600 and yeah there are people having much better lenses it would be so much cooler you know to get just a close-up of this with a blur background yes but for a first time it's okay ish see here is when they are landing in landing so you follow them you see them behind those trees and keep tracking tracking and then hopefully your camera sharp will keep them sharp you know and um, that you can get a nice shot like see this year you get a cluster something <laughs> a cluster of birds not pretty at all so that's why it's hard to um, be satisfied with the photos of the cranes especially because they don't fly around all the time and see we have this here flying towards you so the angle is really good um, it's not really bright enough mm -hmm. and see you catch them when they are approaching and then um, when they are landing they spread the wings out more and yes so this is the shot that you want something like this best would be to have the Sun either behind them you know to bright to shine through this beautiful wings or you know a direct Sun to shine on them so this would be yeah one of your ideal shots um, and with a little bit more nice nicer light nicer than what I have here and then this type of when they dance and they arch their backs is also very pretty but you should you know like if they are in a cluster many other cranes sit standing around you can't get such a, a nice outline and that's also a big factor and here see here they fly away from you and so it's hard to get any nice shot because they just distance themselves and this is the standard shot like they are all the time basically this is most of the time it's like this really boring photo <laughs> and that's why all the photographer are just standing around and waiting waiting hoping that somebody's gonna land in you know and then all the cameras are shooting like machine guns if some action is happening here i'm following those when they come through the trees and get closer and land here so you would like a shot you know of just two of them a couple and uh, to have you know like a isolate isolate photo and this is pretty because they are on white so the background is a bit simpler not all the tree branches in a uh, photo and you will see in the uh, other here and in the next one there is some uh, snow flying around at low level so it kind of creates like a ah yes here see like a little bit of s smoke like you would really want to have a more snowy weather 
something more interesting than just sun, uh, sun full sunblast. Because, you know, the more you have such elements, you can get artistic photos and not just a tourist snapshot. And sometimes, not too often, you will have such a cluster of birds suddenly flying away. And yeah, it is sad when they fly away from you and not towards you. You know, it would be much nicer if they come towards us and then we can get like a, you know, belly shot of them over the sky. But uh, as far as I heard, the birds do not want to expose their belly part towards you know where people are uh, so that's their weak point so basically they prefer to fly away and not over and this is another example when they dance around but see it's absolutely not pretty to have this birdie here among all those uh, stampede snow <laughs> and um, with this totally unpretty background that's why your goal is to find such a bird in an isolated spot because when they are so many you know they overlap and the photos will lose the value this is what you have to watch for when the birds when they lower their heads like this so from such a position, walking, they get into such a position like here with a head down and start kicking the ground. That's when you have to have them in your shutter and start shooting and follow them because they are flying. And see like this here. And you don't have much time, like you really have to uh, follow them immediately. And so this is with a 600 zoom from the place where the photographers are. You should definitely have more than this. Getting in position already. See the body shape. Even such shots are not easy to get them perfect because your camera might focus here on their body or on the legs, but your goal is to have the heads sharp. And here we have a family with their ugly gray baby. <laughs> when you have a bunch of them flying around like this, sometimes, you know, they will get out of your frame, one of them, so it's hard to decide which to keep. And yeah, this is a mummy with her ugly gray baby, overlapped on those trees, not so pretty. See, like here, the baby is just out of frame because I had to choose the mother. Yeah, this one is somewhat better. Um, there is a little bit light sunlight in the wings here, so that makes... And yeah, this is daddy, but daddy got really chopped off. Kicking the earth to launch themselves in the air. This lovey-dovey couple here are dancing together but see the shot is really horrible with all those grasses in the background and the snow that looks so trampled. So you would totally want such shots but in a clean space. This one is not so bad, even though we have many birds in one frame, at least they don't overlap and we can see the red on some of them. See if this bird would be just a few millimeters here overlapping um, the beak and the head of this one, it would be a not nice photo. Here is the example for it, not nice, this overlapping here. This is not so bad, we have a lineup of birds, however, it would be nicer to see the red part on their heads. So this eye, you just keep shooting and 
funnel here, see we have at least more red showing. And then maybe crop out those and just keep here, these here. Here it started snowing a little and you can already see that the mood of the photo is already uh, artistic and much nicer than the other shots. And see like this here, now this one is getting ready to fly, it gets in the position. And yes, here it is the dinosaur and the direction appears good, you know, it looks like it's gonna fly over us. And yes, you do want it to fly towards you to get some belly shot. Looks like we're gonna get a belly shot. Oh no, total focus failure, of course. The camera went to the trees. And, oh, this is kind of okay-ish, but the position is, you know, it's much nicer if you have the wings spread in a higher angle. And, almost out of frame. Out of frame and not sharp. And this again, the snow shots, it looks really stunning to have not too much snow because then, you know, you don't get to see them, especially if you zoom in. But just this amount is, is so romantic. So yeah, the true Hokkaido cold snow and the gorgeous cranes. Here they are eating. Everybody's focused on the ground to um, find the seeds that were given to them. So, yeah, this is another type of shot. You should go in a really low angle, you know, set your camera low. Everybody is eating and we have one here really staring in the camera. And you can actually zoom in and um, the eye is somewhat sharp and you can see the feather. And by the way, these birds cannot land in trees. Their feet are not made to grab a branch, a tree branch. Long ago, the painters, uh, you know, the Japanese traditional painters were painting these in trees, but that was a mistake. Um, actually, they cannot land in a tree there. Their feet don't bend, but they are good enough to get a nice scratch. <laughs> Of the beak, see the skin is falling off the beak and a nice close up. Oh, yes, and this one really nice. Um, you know, to see how vivid this red is, this red crown, and it totally looks like fur, like a koala fur. Okay, never been to Australia, so I shouldn't say that. Um, and here it has snow in the beak. Uh, I think they take sometimes snow and they keep it, it in the beak and it melts like water and then they drink it. At least that's what it looked to me. Courtship singing and dancing. You can even see their tongue here. Here the tongue, <laughs> too funny here and there. And yes, it would be really nicer to have a simpler background for this type of photo. And finally, we have some close-ups and see this red part is now kind of small. It enlarges, it stretches uh, when they are more excited. And yeah, we have a 
face up with a nice blurred background it actually looks as if it's so really bold here kind of like Donald Trump and uh, let me show you now this is a bit uh, this is a different bird and nice we can see the details of the feathers looks more like a fur to me but this one is an older bird I heard from the specialists who saw my photo and that's why it's not so pretty because I don't know I guess the, this here should be more black but at least we can observe the feather in somewhat detail and you know the blurred background and you can really see how low the level of these feathers are it's like a bold spot And the paparazzi, yes, like I said, the longer the better. All my pictures were shot on a 600, but just get a bigger one. And also see their lenses are huge this diameter, like mine is something like this. <laughs> 